By the end of 2014, the US has pledged to withdraw most of its combat forces from Afghanistan. But when their 12-year deployment is complete and the troops have gone, the country will still face monumental challenges caused by decades of war and division. We've been to three key cities to find out more about those problems and how Afghanis will deal with them on their own. It's been 12 years since a US-led invasion toppled Afghanistan's Taliban regime. In 2014, the Americans will finally pull out their combat troops, leaving the nation responsible for its own security and facing an uncertain future. Whatever the military achievements or failings of these past 12 years, the country has changed, for better and for worse. On the plus side, Afghanistan can no longer be called a failed state. It has a constitution, a parliamentary process, a standing army and police force, and growing, if fragile, confidence. And for some, it's more affluent. Billions of dollars of international aid have helped the country's economy, even if much of the resulting wealth is concentrated in the hands of a small minority. But there are still many other challenges here, and next year, which sees presidential elections as well as the departure of foreign troops, will be crucial to the way Afghanistan deals with them. To get a sense of the problems the country faces and how people are responding, we've been to three key regional cities in the north, east and west. Herat is in the extreme west of Afghanistan. Sitting close to the border with Iran, it's an established trading center and one of the most prosperous cities in the country. Its ancient heritage can be seen in the Masala complex and particularly these magnificent 15th century minarets. But if the monuments are a poignant remnant of a long faded empire, in their shadow lurk the casualties of a more contemporary tragedy. Victims of unemployment, poverty, homelessness and now narcotics. الان دو ما میشه ما وزی کرای بند موندیم که ما بریم با خونه خود کار نیه که کار کنیم از اقل بریم پیش زن و بچه خود زن و بچه ما اونجا که حسیره که میایم ولی ما اینجا موندیم کارم نیست با ما کارم نمده اینجا چند وقت ما بیکاریم مجبور شدیم که پودر بکشیم افغانستان پروڈیوسیز 90% of the world's opiates Traditionally, the drug was exported But over the last few years, more and more Afghans have been using both opium and heroin it's now estimated that of Afghanistan's 35 million citizens, at least one million are addicts, one of the highest addict to population ratios in the world. There are many reasons behind this. Decades of war have taken their toll on people's mental health. Society has become more fractured. Life is more uncertain. Neighboring Iran and Pakistan have had drug problems for years, and refugees returning to Afghanistan are bringing their addictions home with them. از سال ایران بودم از هر سال من زندان بودم از ما رو ردیمه از کن اینجا کسی رو نمیشه از اون غریبم خب بگم یه لغمه نون پیش کسی دیگه که ما نمیدم خب شد دولت با ما کمک کنید دیگه از او از این همشاری ها میخوام خب ما کمک کنه که ما از این نجات پیدا کنیم حالا من یه جوانی خود من دوست ندارم خراب کنم من دو روز آمدم هیروین میکشم دو روز من آمدم هیروین میکشم برای چی که اصلا مخم کار اشته. از که فکر میشم. از صدها زیاده میره میکشه خب اینا همش جوان خانواده یاد داره خانزان بچه داره همه از اون بچه خور ویل کدام اینجا نشسته متو داره خب برای چی برای اینکه دولت کمکش نمکنه It's a nationwide problem but elsewhere in Afghanistan there have been some efforts to deal with it Hundreds of miles to the north Mazari Sharif is the capital of Balkh province it's avoided much of the violence experienced elsewhere in Afghanistan over the last 12 years, which has allowed it to concentrate on modernization. The city hospital is tackling the drug problem head-on with a special drug treatment clinic for addicts. New patients go through 72 hours of detox and then enter a rehabilitation program. 
خانم است که به ما مراجعه کرده است از ولایت بلخ است او قبلا یک بار در شفاخانه آمده بود بستر شده بود تداوی شده بود و دوباره که خانه رفت بعد از در جیجان که اینجا بستر شده پرگنان بود و این وقتی که بعد از اینکه ولادت میکنند در نزد خانه بلدینگ پیدا میشه پای و دست برش پیدا میشه بعد از اینکه مادرش پاورش خوشویش است به این میگه که باید تریاک بخوری که پوندگی بشینه بعد دوباره به تریاک رو میره و به طفلش هم که دوستا گریه میکنه به طفلک خود میده و فعلا طفلک 4 ماه است وزنش بسیار کم است اشتیاق طفل نداره اما علت کل علتش گرفتن یک مادرش برش تریاک میداده دکتر سی دیس از استیل ان اول تو کامن تیل Patients from remote regions have little access to medical facilities or education and are often unaware of the dangers of drug abuse. And this clinic is the exception. Across the country, there are only around 2,000 bed spaces for an estimated 1 million addicts. Most will go untreated. But if no broad solution for addiction has yet been found, Afghans are working to repair some of the other social damages caused by years of war. Jalalabad is in the east of Afghanistan, close to the Khyber Pass and Pakistan. While Herat and Mazari Sharif are accessible through their airports, the only way to get to Jalalabad is to drive through the treacherous mountain passes. This road is considered one of the most dangerous in the world, with accidents and fatalities most days. If that wasn't enough, the Taliban regularly set up checkpoints, robbing people and burning cars and trucks. Jalalabad city itself has suffered greatly over the past 12 years, with suicide bombings and assassinations a regular occurrence. And yet, even here, there are people who are determined to help the less fortunate. دی تقریبا په جګلن کې نو درې ساعت او دولس دقیقې د توپ کار کړی دی دې کار کړی دی په افغانستان کې د اول مقام واخیستو دس پروجیکټ از رن بای د مینی موبایل چلډرن سرکس ا چاریټي دات برینګز جګلنګ اند ادر سرکس سکیلز ټو کیډز اول اوور افغانستان وایل اولسو ایجوکیټینګ دیم اباوت هیلث لاند ماین اویرنس اند دی امپورټنس اف سټاینګ ان سکول یو خو دا د سل دی ګنه دا خو دی زیاتره مازور دی لکه پیمور او پلار دی The concept of the project is very straightforward. When children play and practice as a group, they don't just become friends, they also forget about ethnic differences and learn how to work and live together. Similar efforts, to salvage something from the years of war are also being made here. Trade Afghan is an organization that offers education and support to women working in remote areas of the country. The kind of initiative that's crucial to the country's future. One of the women in Jalalabad that we were training, this is the work that she does. And we were there and we picked it up from her. In Jalalabad, uh, there is a lady that is um, doing beautiful uh, hand embroidery uh, there, and she's working with about 350 women in Jalalabad and then we gather the, the end product and then we try to find it, find for it markets. These women are really spending their time, they're really working very hard so you know if they make money that automatically will give them a place in their in their family which will which will put them at the equal you know level because they are the ones that they are also earning and they are bringing money into the family seeing the the actual empowering of women not only in Kabul but when it actually happens in different provinces of Afghanistan that's when it's like absolutely it's so satisfying and you also know that it's it's all it's kind of spreading and it's going all over the country one of the oldest and most prized skills among the women of Afghanistan is carpet weaving. The designs are passed down from mother to daughter and the carpets can take a year or more to make. But selling the carpets falls to the men and Big Zada is the biggest carpet seller of them all. Head of the Carpet Sellers Union, he works constantly to bring carpet weavers and sellers together to ensure higher production quality and hopefully better prices. چون در گذشته ها کالای ما کاملا سرخ بودم 
خالنای سرخ دنیای بیرونی امریکا و اروپا خوش نمیکنم ما ناگزیر قالنای خدا تغییر دادیم رنگایش مسی ساختیم برای فیلم قالین ما در یک وضعیت خوب قرار نداره Changing the color of a carpet is one thing. Changing the mistrust that years of ethnic conflict creates is quite another. That need for unity in the years ahead is on many people's minds. In September 2013, Afghanistan experienced an all-too-rare moment of togetherness, when the national soccer team won the South Asian Football Federation Cup. Spontaneous celebrations broke out across the country, and the football team set out on a nationwide tour. Their first visit was to Mazari Sharif. Atta Mohammad Noor is the governor of Balkh province, which includes the city of Mazari Sharif. A powerful political figure in Afghanistan, Governor Atta has a mixed reputation. Often called the king in the north, his supporters say he's a charismatic leader who could one day be president. His critics say he's a warlord with national ambitions, who buys his popularity with cash and gifts. But whichever is true, he has a politician's grasp of the problems Afghanistan faces. موسیقیه و با غم اندوه زندگی میکردند و مصیبت همیشه و چالش سر راهشان بود تا اینکه خداوند لطف بکنه ما از بیکاری جامعه و جوانان را نجات بدیم سوق بتن نه که به طرف مواد مخدر احتیاط و خدای نخواسته آشوب و جرایم جنگی Unemployment in Afghanistan is currently running at about 40% Governor Atta says he's committed to changing this and by focusing on security he's created an atmosphere where business can grow the glossy new airport in Mazari Sharif is perhaps testament to this, or at least testament to Atta's determination to link his region to international markets. Other cities have older, more established links to build on. Sitting on the old Silk Road, Herat has been a centre of trade and commerce for centuries. Once the capital of an empire that stretched from Iran to China, Herat still prides its cultural legacy. The Friday Mosque is at least 800 years old and is considered Afghanistan's finest Islamic building. And elsewhere in the city, you can still find a workshop making the city's famous blue glass, a craft that somehow survives in a world that's changing. Roya Makhboub is the personification of those changes. She's a young entrepreneur bringing computer classrooms and internet to girls' schools in Herat. Social activism is our plan that we help the students, especially for the female students. And uh, we provide them uh, IT centers and we provide the internet connection for them. And also we provide them uh, free training, how to work with the computers because education gives them freedom of thinking. They have the tools to stay at the home and do online education. And no one can stop them. And it seems nobody can stop them. 
Despite schools being burned across the country and female students being poisoned, they still flock to education. ما به خاطر به مکتب میاییم که علم بیاموزیم و برای تحصیلات ما خیلی مهمه چون دنیای روز به کامپیوتر وابسته و ما دسترسی که به کامپیوتر داریم به زیسند ابتدا آیتی بسیک آیتی رو خوندیم بعد آیتی رو خوندیم به سوشیل میدیا را یافتیم سوشیل نتورک را یاد گرفتیم و تونستیم که به سایت های جهانی دست بیاریم Even a few years ago, this would have been a remarkable sight Afghan girls studying in a classroom surfing the net, updating Facebook and checking their Twitter feed. I also saw the incredible uh, power of social media in my personal life and especially for I'm thinking about the women who get to rights or who get uh, empowerment through the social media. Fighting the system takes many forms and while some choose social media, others embrace more direct action. <laughs> The Blue Group is made up of musicians who use their songs and their graffiti to express their message of peace and their desire for change. We have been doing a lot of effort. We didn't have a lot of effort. We just went to the city of the city. We went to the city of the city. We went to the city of the city of the city. We have a total of a total of a total. ما باید زندگی هم بکنیم همیشه نباید کشته بشیم همیشه نباید بکشیم دل به مای کشور م آزاد باشه دل به مای کشور م آباد باشه ای خدا جان م خیلی آرزو دارم زندگی م از امنیت پر باشه کشور م از زیبایی خارنگی شعار هر مرد و زنی آبی باشه چهره سول منی نداره ظلم و ستم پای داره سر بی گناه به پا داره هیچ کس به ما رم نداره What people do care about is security. Some parts of the country are more peaceful than others, but everywhere there is an awareness that this is a country that's still at war, and that lawlessness, anarchy and extremism are never far away. In Jalalabad, this means a near constant state of heightened security, due in no small part to its proximity to the poorest border with Pakistan. There are frequent attacks against the military and police. Yet strangely, there's optimism here too. That the advances of recent years will be held on to and that things can and will get better. <laughs> In part, this optimism may be due to a widely held, if inaccurate, belief that while some US troops are pulling out next year, it won't mean the end of the West's commitment to Afghanistan. And that view isn't just held by ordinary Afghans. But there is no doubt that the government is going to go to the United States, 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 and it will be bad. But we don't have any doubt about it. We are not sure that in 2014, we will be bad. First of all, we are not sure that the United States is not going to go to the United States. If the United States is not going to go to the United States, we will be able to go to the United States. به خاطر حفظ قدرت و پاور خود در فنشان باقی میمانه، به خاطر تطبیق برنامه استراتژی و در از مدت خود به فنشان باقی میمانه. What is increasingly accepted among policymakers at least is that whatever happens, some way must be found to reach out to the Taliban. So far, peace talks have not got properly off the ground, but even those formerly against negotiations are now softening their stance.
ما اصلا را دوست داریم فرزندای ما دوست داره مردم ما دوست داره ما با مردم ما دیگر جنگ نمیخوایم اگر ممکن بوده باشه که با طالبا دیالوگ صورت بگیره مذاکره صورت بگیره و این منجر به آوردن صلح در افغانستان شو ما ایر رد نمیکنیم ولی آنهایی که جز با جز جنگ دیگه چیزی نمی اندشن که دو باید ما وقت خود و ما پول خود ضایع نکنیم مصرف نکنیم اتا has famously opposed talks with the Taliban in the past so the fact that he is now more amenable is extremely significant. By reaching out to the less militant factions within the Taliban, he's also underlining his determination not to appease the hardliners. For some Afghans though, any suggestion of a return of the Taliban, even in a power-sharing arrangement, fills them with dread. We can't do that again. It's possible that the Taliban will be in Afghanistan. و اون زمان هیچ موزیسیان امکان نداره که در داخل افغانستان بتونه کار بکنه و بعدها مثلا تیپای فکری طالبانی بتونن غالب بشن و اون باورهای جوانا رو بتونن مقلوب خود بسازن ارشیس فیرز اکو دوز اف مچ اف دی یوت ان افغانستان دی نو دیر لایفز ار اکستریملی دیفرنت تو دیر پیرنتس but they also know that the freedoms and advancements in their society are still new, and they are acutely aware of how easily it could all slip away again. Actually, I call it the, uh, how shall I say, the social changes in Afghanistan. We are, we are supposed to be bringing those at every level, because if we do not, then by just you know, one project, another project, and all of that, things don't change. These are the actual social changes that have to start from bottom and go up. We are so aware of what is actually happening that we are trying to have these women ready. A part of the trainings that we do, I do talk to them about election, how important it is for them to, to, to actually uh, go and register. With elections looming in the spring of 2014, political discussion is everywhere. There is much concern in the international community that the country will not have free and fair elections and that current President Hamid Karzai, who is due to step down, will try to manipulate or delay the poll. Afghans too have their concerns. We are in the hope of them. For what is it? For the fact that we have one time, or those who are in the hope of the free government, have the same time for the other one. It is a chance that they have the same time for the other one. ای را فکر بکنن که در هایده ما چطور زمین سازی کنیم که بالاخره در وطن ما جنگ نباشه، قتل نباشه، بیبندباری نباشه، ظلم نباشه، زورگیری نباشه، حق شا و گدا به شکل یکسان باشه. The king and the peasant should have the same rights. This is a reoccurring sentiment in Afghanistan today. People see the abuse of power and condemn it from the local corrupt businessman to the highest political office. از نظر قانون قانون اساسی افغانستان رئیس جمهور کرزی نمیتونه که کاندید بکنه دنیا نباید دولت ما را انقدر آزاد بگذاره که دولت بتونه انتخابات به تعویق بندازه و حاکمیت تیم فعلی را تمدید بکنه و یا اینکه در انتخابات خدای نواسط دستکاری صورت بگیره خوف ما است که غرب به یک بارگی با برخوردهای سلقوی دولت مردان افغانستان افغانستان را به یک بارگی دهی نواد تکرار کرد افغانستان را تک نکنند Talking to people throughout Afghanistan it is clear that many are worried about the future Although not everyone believes the Americans are actually leaving in 2014 there's a growing sense of problems that need urgent resolution whoever's in charge Tackling unemployment, drug addiction, kidnapping and insecurity while building a sense of national unity requires a stable society. But any future stability depends on a peaceful election and a smooth transition of power. And as every Afghan knows, this is far from certain.